tomatoes with your salty pork. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that one? Uh, for a couple seconds. <laughs> I only just thought of it because you mentioned that you were salty. I was gonna. I was thinking of that quote. I think you. I, I think was, you stumbled you, over my follow-up, but that's okay. I well, if you're talking about yours, I ain't been sitting on nothing. So. <laughs> Man, you ain't sitting on nothing. I was also thinking you could. <laughs> the salty dwarf is particularly good. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're going to be for us now, the salty dwarf? Uh, it mightn't well. be bad if we do what we did with the Batman thing, where where we actually put together with the salty, with the salty pork. Uh, if I attempt to be more deliberate while you apparently uncork the salt bucket or whatever it is you say you're going to do. Salt bucket. Compared to how salty I was last week, you were suggesting you were going to be saltier. Oh, I don't know that I'm going to be saltier. Because I was certainly. salted pork, you might be actually turning into like a sort of chip beef or something. That <laughs> we're going to have to soak you for eight days before we can eat you. <laughs> that was just a, the sigh of acknowledgement. <laughs> Um, I'm sad because it's true. So buckle up, because Whee! today's going to be an interesting one. I hate this. Um, oh, this is the other thing I've been thinking about. I hate about. it too. <laughs> Let's talk about that. This is the other thing I've been thinking about and f totally forgot all of last episode. Two whole points! What is this guy doing to us the most? The grenades are hard, and I know that there's a one that allows us to basically, like... This one, I think, yeah, protects against gases... That's, that hasn't really been bothering us. Well, I mean, it is now because he uses the gas grenades, but yeah, I don't but know that we want to waste a point because I don't think it'll come up again. He also does... I mean, we could also, I suppose, just go with more armor, but that feels kind of cheap. Prevents augmentation, deactivation from Moss Manor grenades! Okay, well, I found what we're doing. <laughs> we're upgrading our skin fully. I didn't realize that was part of this upgrade. That makes sense. So now we have higher damage resistance... And can't be stunned by electrics, which is the other thing he uses. So now gas is the only threat he has against us, and that is easy enough to avoid, because, you know, you just run away from the fart cloud. Um, Uncork well, your salty. Yeah, in all seriousness, that though. That was a total waste, and I knew it. Uh, Oi! Uh, oh, that's gas. I was about to say, I'm supposed to be immune. But, um... I sh you know what I probably should have done is gotten immunity to EMPs and gas. But I think the damage upgrade, because the gun, whatever plasma gun he uses, also is pretty hard to get back from. No, enough of that. Um, wow, I ate it. So, uh, I have sat on this long enough, and I feel as though I've... <laughs> You're going to go back to that, are you? I have feared... Uh, bringing this up on the channel because it's highly politicized and oh, I think boy. it... Alright, goodbye folks. <laughs> I said it last week, but now it's for real. <laughs> I think it's beyond politics at this point and it's becoming something that I'm just personally really miffed by. Um, so there's a song recently, not surprisingly, that... Well, that's uh, not the direction I thought you were going to go. I no, 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 no. They, they're, this is just a springboard, so it'll allow the song to jump us into the actual d ocean that is this horrendous... Salt, salt pile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a song recently that's been popularized on various social media platforms. What a surprise! The the uh, the whole reason why I'm off uh, the internet as far as that goes. Are you now. you claim that, but you're no, still more on it than I I'm am. I'm also married to a person who's not, and I hear about it all the time. So that's how most of my, in fact, that's how this content came about. Well, then you should have ignored it. Um, yes, I should have, and I wish I had. <laughs> well, now you're going to subject all of us to but it. Now and I'm potentially just... cripple the channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the, the, the song essentially is a woman that's singing about Okay. Uh, her response or her her aversion to traditional gender roles and oh, and specifically this isn't this, uh, this you ain't been on the internet enough if you think that's the worst thing. Oh the no no, it's out. certainly not. However, this particular topic drives me nuts because it is wrought with 
petulant selfishness. Well, but again, internet. So here we go. Well, actually, no, not even. I'm again, jumping in. I'm, to... my, I'm returning to the Luddite defense. The internet's not the problem. Social media pretty much universally is. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and social media is certainly full of, what did you call it just now? Because you said uh, it in a way that was good. Petulant self-interest or something? Yeah. Pe pe petulant selfishness. Um, so uh, here, here it is, and that's basically that in this particular song, and I don't even know what the artist is, and I'm not going to give it any time of day, so you won't well, see it is, in the. Well, you're making me curious about it, if only because you're so mad. You're not. You're not going to see it. It wasn't the song. It's not the song that drives me crazy. Well, what is it's it? the it's the rally and the battle cry. Well, that's part of the song, of surely. Particularly. Feminists that come out of the woodwork and they're like those other feminists. I'm fine, but the woodwork feminists. No, listen. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm so fine with the steel work go. feminists. I'm, I'm gonna have to set this up because otherwise I'm just gonna lather into it. Well, you're actually <laughs> lathering without substance it, right well, now. It's rather this fascinating. This is the problem. This is why I don't want to do that. Is because I know that if I let this topic get away from me, that it's just going to become something where I'm gonna end up well, like John Madness. <laughs> this is the kind of thing. It's, well, so, you're getting there already. Oh. So here's the thing. I'm going to go back on the historical context to say what I am actually totally affirming and what I'm for, which is I don't have a problem with like early suffragette level like, hey, we want to be considered equally capable and and, uh, you know. He's somebody talking about the people, right to vote. Yeah, no, well, not just right to vote, but also like I, I'm, I'm good that was with predominantly what it was. Yeah, I mean. but I'm good with the notion that women ought to have um, a voice in, um, in equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. Well, that's which is the whole context of what really all any uh, any argument of equality should be is equality of opportunity, not I'm equality. I'm honestly of outcome. sick of the topic at all. Well, I agree. I take the Solzhenitsyn approach. Okay. There is no equality. If you suck, it's because it's you. Well, that's yeah. It's it's very much. If people if people are free, they are not equal, and if they are equal, they are not free. I mean, I'm getting to that point where I'm like, you know what? Sod the whole debate. Yeah. So, uh, I I just want to start by saying, historically, don't have a problem. If you're it attempting to the, couch the reaction we're going to get, you've already failed by No, no, no. I, it's not a couching. It's to say, I actually I'm am not a for, misogynist. No, no, no. I'm not even defending myself. Forget it. If they call me a misogynist, then screw that. I don't care. What I'm saying is, I am for women. 100%. <laughs> that was the, <laughs> I am. I'm not a misogynist. I am... <laughs> <laughs> what? I was just reminding me of that old uh, <laughs> farmer what's his head video, but I can't repeat it because it's a bit. <laughs> I am a feminist. Don't I love them? <laughs> I no. mean, that's what you're sounding a no, little bit No, no. Like. What I'm I'm married to a woman <laughs> whom I love, and I, I have is, many black friends, and, and is very capable. And I want to affirm that on on air. Just if spit you it out. You're digging a Listen, hole. No, I'm not. No, I'm not at all. I want to affirm that I think. 1,000% that the issue is twofold, and partly it lands on men. So I actually want to deal with that, too, because it drives me crazy on that end as well. So let's start with the feminist, just because Eve ate the apple first. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but uh, in all actuality, this whole topic has driven me crazy, because one of the biggest things the feminists will cry is that essentially this pseudo patriarchal patriarchal society that has kept them suppressed for years because they've had to um do in their minds what they call like slave labor of taking care of children and making sure the house is taken care of and all this other stuff and they by juxtaposition they frame men as these people that want to sit on their thumbs and do nothing and really aren't worth as the spit that you can <laughs> put in their direction. And what drives me crazy about this concept, uh, what drives me crazy about this concept is, and why I think that I'm, I identified it as this I'm petulant, massage. I mean, it's <laughs> why I identified it as this is petulant selfishness is number one, even if you don't like traditional gender roles, our job as 
as adult people in society is to contribute to said society. Get over ourselves. Yes, there's a part of it. It's to contribute to said society. So whether or not you decide that in your family, you're going to be somebody who goes out and does the corporate thing while your husband stays at home, bully, I don't care. But the issue I take is when you act as though your solution or your desire is to not do anything and just be praised simply for existing and that your husband ought Sadly, to Sadly that's not a feminist thing. Do that's just a modern thing. Everything. Now on the converse, I don't think that either is true and the the sentiment that you should frame your husband in a way or maybe not your husband, if you frame a man in such a way that's like, you know, I'm living with this man who expects me to do everything and then he just wants to sit on his thumb. Um, open your eyes for just a dang minute and realize that there is a likelihood that there is a whole, a whole other side of that coin that he's out doing other things and getting a job done or, you know, whatever it may be. And the reason that you don't hear about maleism, <laughs> I don't know what the uh, converse of... Men's rights is a, is a thing that exists. Well, it's not nearly as publicized. I but. certainly don't want to see the day that it becomes publicized, publicized because I will equally be e irritated and miffed at that, too. Well, it's basically the seedier elements of the red pill movement, which I think misses the mark a lot of the time. How, it's, what do you? It essentially the re, I think a lot of the problem with red pillism is that it or the kind of men going their own way thing is it's just a vehicle for bitterness. It's like that's one hundred percent. The, the what feminists get to be bitter about men, so now we're the men going to be bitter about the women. It's like, or we could all grow up. That's another solution. Well, and that's all I know. I'm, I know I'm thinking fantasy. That's, fantasy all, that's here, all I'm advocating for. Here's the thing. And I'm going to bring it back to ponder, but th there's a... I thought that was an actual, like, proper noun. <laughs> like... Who's ponder? But th th this co this concept of... I'm uh, hitting him a lot, so. Of you being so myopic in your perspective that you... Are, you genuinely believe that people that you come in contact with in this particular case, more specifically men, have literally nothing else to do in life other than to sit there and enslave you and make you subservient to them. Wow. <laughs> That's all I have to I'm say. I'm really just going to let you cure in the salt. Because, because I mean, it's because, funny to... Because <laughs> here's the thing. N number one, it Whoa. is... It is a biological tendency of men, but I think more so a societal expectation of men that in modern context to a positive level has been offset slightly, that men essentially are the ones that get crap done and shut their mouth up about it and just... Don't worry about how you feel about it. Don't worry about who gives well, a crap don't, about don't it. Don't you know that's equally Just, toxic? It is, and I'm no, not. It's that, not. No. It's called being a freaking adult. But uh, well, I agree. But here's the thing. Nobody cares about my opinion. I don't think that it's a. Bad I don't even thing. care about my opinion. I don't think it's a bad thing for men to have an offset to a degree of saying, "Hey, you don't need to just shut up about ah! it." But here's my thing. He didn't do that all the other time. I times. take issue with this notion that. It's not okay, again, like you said, to expect that of men because that's what a man ought be. That, that, that is what a man should be, is this idea of we should be able to shoulder the emotional burdens of not only another but of our own selves in a somewhat private context, not because somehow we're not allowed to share emotion or we're unemotional individuals, but because as men we're supposed to be the stronger partner of the and that was it the, bye everyone that was it <laughs> the stronger partner of the of the natural order of male and female coming together to reproduce and to build family and whatever else 
Now, what's being really attacked in this particular situation is not just traditional family roles because, again, I say, I come back to, I have no problem if you say, hey, in my particular family structure, my man stays home and I go out and I'm the breadwinner. Who gives a crap? Well, psychologically what? speaking, you'll be in an unhappy marriage, but... Well... <laughs> But what Not I'm universally, is, just very statistically. Statistically great, and I agree, and I certainly would affirm that in my own context, that's been the case where I don't, we don't have that. We embrace a very traditional gender role because um, it's been that way for thousands of years, not because of the fact that it was suppressive, but because of the fact that it works. <laughs> and the natural tendencies of our biological makeup, whether or not you decide that you're going to embrace those or not, lead us in a particular manner I to accomplish I, particular roles. I had my big boomy attack. Now, here's, here's the, I guess, where I would start the argument. This whole issue stems from a misunderstanding hey. of what is needing to be accomplished, I suppose I would say it that way. Oh, that... I can't believe I'm a big doofus who forgot. Wow! Oh, okay, he does react. <laughs> he gets back up from that much faster. But, I mean, if I just do that, pot shot him once, and then jump over the wall, um, I found the new strategy. If... We just keep forgetting all the features that we have on our if, upgraded bonds. If... Men had done a better job historically of valuing. Well, no. If society. Nope, it's the woman's fault. A, no, <laughs> if society as a whole had done a better job at at valuing the the immensely complex well, and it, difficult the role thing is that of motherhood did. and and. Uh, you know, traditional gender role of a woman, the capability that she has, the um, the strength that she has in her own right in, in different context. Um, I will raise you, though, and then, say that society did values those things. 100%. But it couldn't catch up with, again, postmodern technolo technological industrialization. The suffragette movement really gained traction in the 1800s, culminating in the early 1900s when the laws were finally passed, at least in the U.S. I don't know about the rest of the world. Why wasn't there suffragettes in, like, 15th century France? Because I think back then we were a simpler civilization that did value things because industrialization has screwed us all up. That's my take on it. I don't know that That's, it's... I'm, uh, I said I was following Solzhenitsyn. I'm actually following, following Kaczynski. <laughs> here's, Not too closely, I promise. <laughs> here's, my, here's my pushback slightly to that. I just need that. your address real quick. I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's more a matter of with future progress and growth requires new strategies and well, systems. Well, exactly. That's my point is you're going, you, I, we used to have, we had a dot paradigm that changed no and we didn't change enough with it. It well, changed too fast for us to accommodate. But see, the, the feminists would argue what needs to change. Well, the feminists the, would argue in a historically that women have been oppressed forever. And that's where it's like, completely that agree. society has changed. It's the changes that happened in society that brought about what you perceive as this oppression. But what's fascinating to me is 60 and I'm being generous here, 60 60% of the pushback that traditional mother roles or traditional gender roles within a, a female context in a home um, are pushed back by other women. Exactly. And they are d d demeaned somehow by other women. And then, therefore, there's this outcry because of it's like— Because, again, you're, you're invalidating my choice by not making the same one. Because, again, people don't, make, don't realize that the consequence is the choice. I want to choose this, but if other people don't— that sheds light and therefore puts me in a different perspective, whereas if everyone made my choice, it would be the right choice. And people can't condone the thought of not making the right choice, which is never well, possible. And so Peterson, Most of the time. Peterson talks about, and I'm going to get back to the whole like male— I'm going to get being, back to the salt, trust being, me. —being uh, uh, stoic this is in just this the pepper for a regard. Um, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about the notion that Within societies that have tried to move away from traditional gender roles, what they found is that there's there's a actual lack of fulfillment in that. Like they 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 end up returning in droves 
to traditional gender roles because of the fact that they find that there is an emptiness about not embracing the role that they were, again, God designed to fulfill. Men are meant to shoulder more than a woman is able to emotionally because we are there to support and encourage our wives and to make sure that she is doing well and whatever else. As a man, my responsibility, my obligation to my wife is to be there to care. Now, are there, are there piece of crap men out there that decide that they're going to opt out of that role? Yeah, there was in the garden too. Opting out of role, it's a big issue for men, for sure. But then the, the converse of that coin is that the the struggle for for ladies is always going to and will has always been this uh, superseding or trying to um, come out from under that that protective covering and saying somehow they can stand on their own. I can never raise a, a family or or sustain. Uh, the 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 home in the same manner that my wife can, both biologically and and uh, psychologically, emotionally. I'm not designed to do that. The way that my wife approaches my children is going to be different than the way I approach my children. Not because I can't approach my children in another manner. And here's where I draw nuance: is because. Feminists have responded to this culture of masculinity that says men ought to be purely this, you know, this one thing, whether it be uh, aggressive and we're the, you know, we're the heavy and we get things done or whatever that's else. That's pretty much what they don't want. And that's great. That's fine if, if you want to respond to those types of men and say, hey, but you're more than that and you need to consider the fact that there's also a piece that you need to add in addition to that or whatever. Great. But when you swing to the opposite side and you say, actually, you shouldn't be that. You should be this other thing. Or, in fact, what you're doing is literally completely useless and, and we might as well just live without you, suggests that... Um, the role that men bring to the table is not valid just as much as you're saying that somehow your role has been invalidated for the longest time. It's what you said with the whole red pill concept of like when we respond by saying, well, we're going to then, you know, not respect you guys either. And we're forget you. We're literally cutting off our nose to spite our own face. And it's like, okay, the point is, as men, we ought to lift up I and highlight and, and um, respond to women in a way that says, wow, what you can do in the context of building uh, an environment and a culture and, um, and nurturing and sustaining life, both in my emotional state as well as my children's emotional state or whatever else, is remarkable. It's not something I could do at all on my own. It's not something that I would ever try to do because I'm not built in the same way that you are for that role. Now, totally validate single dads and single moms out there that have to play both roles. That's great. And I, and more, you know, honor and respect to you for having to balance that equation. However, it is true that you would be better off with having a a normal traditional family structure because the fact that that's the way that the creator, the person who put everything together has designed it. And so what drives me nuts about this whole movement is that they disregard that while they say, well, we're out here, you know, we're doing all the housework and we're doing all the, you know, making sure that their kids are taken care of. And we're in fact, in the song, it talks about it's basically being, you would use the language there, kids. Um, the, the fact that they 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 identify like being essentially sex objects or saying like we're only here to make babies or whatever else um, in this particular song that I'm using as a framework. But in this in this uh, this outcry, what they're disregarding completely is that 
the men is are out there sustaining the it's home funny, in yeah. a different what, way. What, what, where's this house come from? Yeah, exactly. Thinking? Where's the house come from? Um, <laughs> how is it that you're, you know, getting the the supplies and the, the, the sustaining, you know, not just money, forget money, but again, I say, actually, if you're no, actually... Well, don't forget money. That's a significant portion. Well, it of is. It is. You know, for sure. Provision, you know, is, is ah, one of the okay, main roles of men. Attacks. It's provision, protection, you know, th- those types of things. But when you dis- I do not like that angle. When you disregard those things, yeah, it seems like men don't really do much because you they come home and, of course, they're gassed from a day or maybe they've had an emotional context or whatever at, the, at their work. But here's the thing. You don't see very often, not never, but very often, both on an unhealthy level and on a healthy level, you don't see men coming back into the home and going, let me tell you all about why my day sucked and why I need some, you know, some support and care. And it's so fr- frustrating and upsetting to me that the minute I come home, you're not paying attention to me because you're gassed from cleaning and doing all this kind of stuff. We don't sit there and and put our feelings on our sleeve and gripe about it because guess what? You're an adult. <laughs> you have to just get crap done. And so... That this this notion that you have not moved away from the fact that life isn't about you <laughs> is really what feminism is rooted in. It's like we don't want to do that. We don't want to clean the houses and do the the child raising. And in fact, we don't really even want to be here for sex unless we want you to be over here. And it's like. Okay, then that's one way to live your life. But Jordan Peterson would argue that those types of women are not attractive to men. <laughs> and then men go, okay, fine. I'll. It's not the. Well, the funny thing is to make it in a humorous context is the advice that women give to other women is what women want in men. <laughs> Truth. I mean, this is how you'll be attractive because this is what I would be attracted to, which would be a man. <laughs> so you should be like a man. And men are like, I don't want to date a man. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, unless they do, in which case they're going to go for the real deal. Because <laughs> you're a knockoff man at best. And that's the last little fringe that we had left. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, no, well, but- I'm just saying, if you wanted to date a man, you wouldn't date a woman. So even if you try to be a man, you, they'll just go for the men. <laughs> no, what I'm, what I'm getting at is that when, it, in response to the disrespect that was it's supposed to be quite was, the song. <laughs> in response to this. the disrespect, no, 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 no. It's a, it's an ongoing. It's an ongoing. Uh, You've just been watching too much Fresh and Fit. Adjutant. In my, in my, you know, under my skin constantly because... But see, that's interesting because where, if you're, if you claim to be off social media, where are you getting this from? Well, it... Because, I mean, you could pl- be getting it from YouTube. I've seen it on YouTube, but I just don't interact with that side of YouTube. Sure. There's a part of it that is that, but I think the other part of it is I do like to keep my finger on the pulse of the yeah, modern zeitgeist of culture the modern because, zeitgeist can die because I want to be able to speak part of my degree in in, well, I suppose um, you've got a vested in theology is to bring some clarity to some of these principles and issues and this is where I say my wife and I both together in in tandem working alongside of one another as ought be um, we we have this frustration with this disassembly of the traditional family values, which is really what feminists are after, is trying to to deconstruct the traditional family. Um, and what what at its core, he's just flipping over the I acknowledge one. that really what it comes down to is, is a lack doing? of. Well, capitalize on that sun gun. Well, he's only going over the wall in the middle. Um, and that's un- see now he's breaking out of it. The uh, the it, it is stemmed, I believe, from a and I, I'm 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 very convicted that or I'm I'm firmly 
assured in my own perspectives, both in study statistically as well as in um, just theological understanding and, and how I think we've strayed from the path quite a bit, that when there is disrespect or disregard with something that um, ought to have been given honor. You know, the Bible talks about this idea that, you know, you need to give honor where honors do. When women did not feel that their role as mother and as, you know, wife and as whatever else was being honored or appreciated or valued, then the outcry was not hey, I really am needing to be valued or appreciated. It was, well, we're not going to appreciate or value you either. And then it just well, became... Well, it didn't do that at first. There was explain. a big gap, but the suffragette movement was far earlier than the civil rights sure. movement, which is not what the... It's not related, but it was at the same time for a reason. Like, the 60s is when second wave and every subsequent wave of feminism came about. And it came about in that period of social tumultuousness for a reason. All of the social tumultuousness of the 60s was related. So, but I mean, the suffragette was in, like, the suffragette movement was in like the 20s. When, well, but it, the when, the, is, when the laws were, okay, But the point is, on. under the guise of equality. So my point is, that women, was a 40-year gap. Okay, it's not coming back that time. That was really weird. There was a 40-year gap between the first suffragette movement and the feminism that I think you're railing against, which is more the second and later it's waves. Pri- yeah, I, t- I totally agree. It's primarily modern feminism, but my my no, my oh, issue oh. and where I take primary uh, concern and, and okay. even, even offense is to say that... I'm going to have to do something about that. Good, great. Freaking <laughs> USB. Uh, is that the? That <laughs> now, was I'm just, now I'm just I don't think it's the molest. I don't think it's gonna come back from that. Good grief. Uh, it 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 was an outcry of. Okay, I didn't even move. Is, Do we have a backup was, for this? This is the wire. Well, I mean, this is I supposed have, to be the backup. I have a... a, a is it charged? Because yeah. this is getting absurd. Yeah, I have... Like, I'm not even moving it. That's a problem. That means the wire on this thing is starting to fray or something. Are you sure that's charged? I have new batteries. We're getting behind the scenes right now. Uh... Man, that means I like this controller though. I like wired controllers in general. <sighs> well, this one is finicky in a different way, so just. Well, be that's. Aware. Is it in a way? Okay, is this. Am I going in frying pan into the fire situation? It's not or worse, it's just. Different. Well, why is it. Oh, these. Well, because all of these disconnect weirdly, but that's if you like jostle them. This is starting to now act up, even if I don't jostle it. See? See, this is why you keep a wired controller around, and then the <laughs> wired controller is the one that goes goofy. I'm not going to be able to use this because it's now connected as second player. You have player. to pull that. Well, yeah, but we're going to have to now reconnect it. it. Well, because now this is connected yeah, as so second here. player, so it now needs to. Oh, no, yeah. Um, uh, no, so my my this fun. Where I take issue. Um, First and foremost, a normal is, show would have cut this out, but we ain't that highfalutin. <laughs> come on, don't do that. Are you sure those are fresh batteries? Yes, they are. They just, like I said, this one sits goofy. It's still it's connecting gonna... a second player because it now knows. Well, that is interesting. We may yeah, have to actually cut. <laughs> now we've both got reasons to be salty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to get on a rant bus strictly. Oh, I'm not going to. No, I'm just going to be salty. I'm not going to actually talk. I'm just mad at the technology <laughs> just, now. Mm, oh, I just got a cavity. Now I guess that's sugary. <laughs> Can um, you get a salt? I bet you salt probably could give you cavities. Maybe not a cavity. It could certainly give well, you some cause a cavity mouth isn't, sores. Well, I mean, a cavity doesn't have anything specifically saying it's sugar. It just means rotting of the teeth, which I think numerous things can cause. In um, any case, you haven't missed anything. We just spent 15 minutes fighting and making no progress. <laughs> and um, then also having, in the game, we also made no progress. And making no progress. 
Um, you now you get the chance to make more progress with your speeching. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna try to sum up because now I'm really <laughs> confused about where I was. But the you bottom were, well, line. Well, let's is, be honest. You were still in the middle. I mean, uh, the 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 the. The root and foundation no of feminism, I believe, was founded in a lack of honor and respect to the woman in the traditional gender role. I think that is 100% at the foot, the doorstep of a man. But and I would also, I want to include what I said, I think that was probably lost. Maybe it was part of the part we recovered, but the idea that that was also a matter of societal change as much as it was... Yes, but because the man is still responsible for uh, for adjusting to that societal change and bringing about honor and respect still within his home and within the context of the greater society. That's still... But see, this is where I don't know the history well enough because I'm not sure that the 60s feminist movements were a response to that as much as you seem to think they were. I would argue the suffragettes had a point. I don't yeah. think the second wave feminists did. Well, what do you think their outcry was? For? I think I don't think it if was they much were of an outcry. Content I think in it their was, role. Then why do you think they were? Because I think there was so much. I mean, yeah, boy, I, you know, I was making fun of you for being the misogynist. I'm gonna get really. I was trying to stay out of this <laughs> dogfight. I would, I mean, there's, I'll say this in as diplomatically terms as I can. There is fruit to the argument. Okay, that th threw me for a sec. I didn't know where that came from. There is valid evidence to support the argument that the birth control pill had as much to do with anything in the second and, f and subsequent feminist waves. Because okay. at that point, consequence of... Specifically sex. Which I think is a broad, if not dominating majority of what post-suffragette feminism is about. It's about pleasure without you brought up the, You brought up the concept of the Mad Men thing, which even in Mad Men I thought was a caricature and unrealistic. That, like, it was just acceptable Character for men to sleep around. And it's like, it's never been that acceptable. That's true. I mean, in ancient Greece. But even then, you'd be kind of viewed as, like... A man whore? <laughs> a little bit. That wasn't as stigmatized, but you would have the stigma where it's like, oh, yeah, he sleeps around. They, you, there wasn't punishment for it. But, I mean, arguably, since, I suppose, the, more accurately, it would be any society post-Christian dominance... Yeah. So let's say 300 AD and on has pretty heavily chastised profligacy in any sex that commits it. Yeah. Now, I think the feminist complaint of the 60s is that female uh, not profligacy is too much of a mouthful. What I'm trying to think of is there's another word that's less of a promiscuity. Yes, that one. Uh, female promiscuity bears higher consequence biologically than male promiscuity. You can run away from a child you've fathered on accident. You cannot do so. You cannot mother a child on accident. Unless you're John Locke. <laughs> what? No, you're the, for the former statement, not the latter. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, I don't remember him having a point on this. No, no, meaning he couldn't run away from the... Never mind. I'm just... But so... Okay, that wasn't John Locke. John Locke's the philosopher. Oh, I was talking about the. I'm <laughs> You're sorry, sorry. I was okay. talking about the weird. The the the. <laughs> That's why you threw me off. No, I'm sorry. I was meaning. Uh, what's his name? Ivan Locke in, Ivan. in the film. Yeah, Ivan Locke. But uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> John sure. Locke. Okay. John Locke. But I think that is why the birth control pill basically made it so that oh, now women can sleep around as much as men and not bear biological consequence. So therefore, they should be free to. But that sort of takes as read the, the false notion that men sleeping around was ever condoned. It didn't bear consequence, or at least not as much consequence, because of biology. But, I mean, again, all Christian societies have uh, uh, shamed, to sometimes lesser or greater degrees promiscuity even amongst men well and here here's, it's just that a man can run away from his mistakes more easily than a woman in our current 
therefore birth experience control e- equalizes that current- and therefore the women think rather than men being held to the same level of accountability that we are because we literally biologically can't escape this consequence right now that we can thanks to the thanks to modern tech or modern medicine we should all just be act like that's why, that's why the 60s were also a huge hippie free sex yeah. concept is like oh now there's no consequences well, and let me let so me say everyone this. should be a slut yeah let me say this first of men all men and women alike and it's like well no we should all go back to both of us having accountability yeah and let me say this i i think women only see that disparity in our current ex- existence because if bible be, uh, be believed well, that women. Well, I'd like to point out to you that most feminists aren't going to be compelled by. Oh, that. 100%. So, 100%. if it's to be believed, I don't 100%. think they're, they don't have a stake in that. One hundred percent. I'm just saying, I'm I'm stating this as a as a, you know, a f- fact of in our current existence. Of course, women bear more responsibility in that equation. Well, not exactly, given by, modern medicine. Well, but I said I was meaning before. Oh, I thought you said currently. But, but the interesting thing is men are still going to be ah. held doubly responsible <laughs> in the long that, run and I so i go what, is, what does that mean be, because well again, are you going to be judged for a child you, you I ran away from think I, so. yeah of course I but th- I certainly the trouble think so. is no one thinks on that grand a time scale they think well, i 100 percent agree i mean with that's that. one thing that when people read something like proverbs and they see the passages that say you know a wicked man will turn to dust and they think they want to see that and it's like you're thinking on far too narrow a time scale because that, that is eternally speaking. Yeah. Because when it says, oh, the, you know, the wicked will come to, you know, to I, ruin, I wish yeah. I could. I can't name a specific verse. Several of them say that where it's like, yeah, the wicked will come to ruin and you will search for the wicked man and won't be able to find him because he will be destroyed. And it's like people think that that means on Earth. And it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's yeah. like, no, that means cosmically. Yeah. And of course, that then people think, well, then what does it matter? Because I'll be dead then, too, and I won't get to see it. And it's like, well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're so right. If, you're, so why does if it you wanted to see the results, they're probably not necessarily going to happen, but it will happen in the end. Okay, I'm going to die again. I have to get to him before he launches grenades, because all that's going to happen is I'm going to die as soon as this animation finishes. Because then the grenades will go off, and there I go. Well, I think I'm alive, though. I'm just blind. <sighs> I'm immune to EMPs. I don't know if there's an immunity Are to flashbacks. Did you actually? Oh no, I keep forgetting that. yourself I'm gonna again. Do, I'm going to do that now. Uh, I mean, that was a flashbang, so I can't. I could be immune to all types of grenade damage. Would I just have to? That's three separate upgrades I'd have to get. Um, I don't have that many points. So, getting back to to my my point, I think that getting, that is a getting the salt barrel back out. The that is an initial. It's not a soapbox. It's a um, salt box. This that is an initial struggle. Is that. Um, I think it's rooted in that, but in response and, and, you know, as you, you kind of brought that it's possible that it's rooted more in, in, um, again, this idea of, well, actions of pleasure without bearing responsibility of said pleasure or sub of said choice. Cause that admittedly later. has always been, men have been favored in that category simply by biology it's like okay you could escape the consequences of your stupidity and i would say again and i only think that, temporarily well yeah cosmically, sure no, i, you I, I would agree with that but the problem is when it became possible for no one to bear the consequences that it, that's what it became it was well rather than holding men equally accountable societally which again different societies have had laxer or or stricter standards i still think that there is truth to the fact that it's never been condoned in in a post-christian world which has been for the last several thousand years or two thousand years at least so the idea that it was ever like oh it's totally okay false but biologically speaking you could still get away with it therefore once women had the chance to get away with it inevitably that was going to be what happened but i want to stick to the the claimed argument. Because there's two. Um, I, I suppose to wrap up before I will truly be finished with all my point is there's always two solutions to a double standard. Either they both hold to one or they both hold to none. 
you could say women have this standard, men have this standard, men should have the same standard women. That, I think, is the correct option. That's why I think when people, especially that's the biggest well, argument and, and against modern stuff, people, yeah. is they think, well, men can sleep around, so why can't women? And I'd agree with neither should be. Yeah, abstinence until It's like, why is that? Until why commitment can't, is and, always And that's better. almost like a radical position. It's like, well, no, it is that's, a radical position there's only now. two solutions. You, If there's a double standard, either both get on one or both abandon both. And, of course, we're in the world that's said both abandon both. We've been living in it for 50 years, and it's not going well. Yeah. Nobody likes the one well, that we're because, living in. Because in But a they don't non, realize that the other option is still there. In a non... Uh, Did that work? Fal- uh, in a non-fallacy context, what happened was the floodgate concept of when one thread of that let's just see what happens if I start broke like everything. Oh, I just, pressed it. Everything just kind of started to unravel, which I think is arguably what is going to continue to happen. I mean, you see this within. Well, there's a well. You, listen, you see this small, within the context of sexuality, within the s- context. I of, think people are waking of, up to their misery. But I think we are only at the yes, beginning stage. There is truth to that, which I'm going to actually circle back to in just a second. But um, the the uh, getting back to the the root of my frustration with particularly modern feminism is it is never detached from their. They can never just say, "Hey, we're." feeling like we don't want to embrace our our traditional gender roles we want to be you know career women or whatever it may be and if you try to tell us that we have to embrace these traditional gender roles then you know Mm. you're you're prejudiced whatever great you can say that but it's never just that it's always we don't want to embrace these gender roles and by the way men just sit on their rears all day and don't do anything so why would we want to honor and serve and respect and whatever else them i'm like why can't that be disconnected why is it, why do men have to be a part of this at all but see i would wager that's even post second wave feminism that's the thing that's funny i mean it's in a cruel sense the cruel irony of it is that the the hookup culture that we still live in and which only came about after the 60s Benefits men immensely more than women. Yes, it does, 100%. Because psychologically speaking, men can play that framework. I still think it's more damaging to them, but it's damaging in subtler ways. Yeah. So it's like the fact that women cling to this thing that they've constructed that demonstrably benefits men more than them. Yeah. It's like... Again, I think it's, it is very much the cutting off your nose to spite your face. Where it's, it's yeah, which I got it yet yeah, earlier. Yeah, and it because that's when you say, "Oh, men." Because I think the the concept of men sleeping around and being irresponsible again came after the 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 second you know after the sixties when there was this conception that like everyone thought that way. Yeah, we can all play like this, but women turns out they don't like that. Yeah, men can. Men are more easily fooled into liking it, I would say, because I think ultimately it's there. It will always be the lack of fulfillment, yeah, which will bear on you eventually. But I think men can more easily dissociate from it. Yes, dissociate. But so that's why I think the complaint that you're ascribing to second wave feminism, I think, is a complaint that arises after second wave feminism, partially because second wave feminism created the environment in which men being scoundrels. Was far easier. Right. Well, men being scoundrels was far easier, but it was also now universally expected. Exactly. Now, no one had to bear the consequences, so it was like, well, why shouldn't men sleep around? Right. If women aren't going to get pregnant, which was their primary complaint, was that like we, this is the, the consequences of sleeping around are disproportionate. Yeah. It's like, well, now the consequences are proportionate. So why shouldn't we all do it? Yeah. And the answer is they don't have an answer to that. Because we all shouldn't, because it's psychological. The problem is the psychological damage, not any other. Well, we don't seem to. I keep wanting to pass this to you, but I forgot that I'm. I'm not that. My focus on attempting to get this. Your topic is. You've drawn me in this time. Last time I was letting you just <laughs> ramble. Well, here's here's my here's my argument. That 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 my chief argument is this. It is myopic and self-focused because, and I'm going to bring it back and really kind of dig deeper into this principle, what you're doing is disregarding any emotional or non-respected or non-honored baggage that you're 
that your significant other or partner that happens to be a male may be experiencing because it's not expressed. (laughs) That to me is absolutely mind boggling. Well, but that again, that's because you are a man. What do you mean? Women express just naturally, usually. I mean, again, yeah, sure. we're always speaking to this. Sure, so, but what I'm saying is so, how dare you assume that well, we, simply because we happen to bear it. Well, because they wouldn't. Who cares? <laughs> well, but this is my point. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying if you're someone who is physically... You can't have a double standard in that regard either. Well, but, but what I'm the saying. thing is, the reason that it isn't seen as a double standard, like, my... My point in this saying this is because women are of a psychology on average that wouldn't bear something silently, then they don't conceive of the fact that men do that. They think since they're silent, they must not bear anything. And this and I'm that's gonna, psychologically and this rude. I'm gonna, you can't get mad at them for. I mean, mm, you it's can. a little bit well because it's, it's an intentionality of, thing. Well, like, it's yeah. exact. We are as men, we're responsible for on an intentionality level. Considering when our wives are tired of doing the dishes, we're supposed to magically know when we ought to come and help. No, I actually fully disagree. You uh, should. There should be communication. One hundred percent on both sides. That's what I'm saying. So if you have a problem with feeling like, oh, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling respected in a home, have your have a conversation, or maybe say. Hey, hey, I'm not specifically embracing the gender role that I am am having to fulfill right now. I don't have a problem with that. I want I want that to be clear. I again, I affirm 100% that traditional family values and roles will always be the most fulfilling, Ob- objectively and psychologically. That is a fact. However, if you choose that you're wanting to live your life in a different manner. Far be it from me to tell you otherwise, but have a conversation about it. Don't get on a rant bus that suggests that somehow only you are feeling this because somehow you're a suppressed and, and, uh, um, um, okay. what is it called? Where is he at? Suppressed and, and, um, and controlled, you know, uh, minority in this equation. That's not the case. So I just go, I don't. I'm not following your logic whatsoever because the, the, the outcry of we want, you know, we want men to honor and respect the fact that we are capable and we're able. It's like, why are they looking for that? Why are you looking for that? It's because you do value what men think, whether or not you want well, to that's the other or thing. you think you that's should. Why you I do. I suppose there's. When I say that where people are waking up to their misery, I think that we are actually at something of a crossroads that could be very dangerous because either the more hopeful prospect is people see through the lies of the past 50 years and realize, oh, yeah, we've been in a paradigm that sucks for everyone, which I think there's reasonable. I mean, we are fairly intuitive as people, so I think that's there's good chance that we'll come around to that. Well, but that, the trouble is, I was gonna in the meantime, this whole the, the, the concept, and this is why I think it's somewhat... It's a dangerous game to play the the cuz I think sadly the as I said before men can live much more comfortably in the sort of delusion of satisfaction with the sort of culture we have which is one of the reasons I think the men going their own way thing is a, is a risk is that it will work for a longer time that than is obvious. Hmm. Like, if it if there is enough pushback to the point where you have large, because currently it's still a fairly mo- small minority. If there comes to be a large, probably won't ever reach true majority. But if it becomes a big proponent of men who are genuinely like, yeah, I'm just, I don't care. I'm going to be single forever. They're going to do a lot better for longer. Sure. They're going to succeed for longer than it would be obvious that failure is imminent, if if you catch what I mean. Sure. It it's going to be a precipitous. It's, it's going to be a lot of steadiness before a very precipitous fall. Right. At and which point it will missing, be too late. And it's still missing a cosmic element. I think that they're obviously overlooking. Yes, but, I, but. I, the reason I think it's a threat is more of the fact that it will. It's sort of like a. It, it's a cure that won't actually cure anything, but it will appear like it has for long enough for the disease to be incurable. Hmm. It will make That's it... That's a really good... Because, statement. again, I think men can live with that far more easily 
for long enough that it can become dominant. Yeah. At yeah. which point it can't be reversed. Agreed. And then the consequences will come all at once. Well, I think that's purely because Whereas there's a I think, degree of stubbornness or or. Well, I think it's a sort of the the, the joke is frequently that men have the capacity to just shut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think 100%. that ultimately, I mean, you're going to end up with... I don't think that that will truly lead to fulfilled happy men. No. But it will... I mean, I mean, to get very blackpilled on you, how many men are fulfilled and happy right now? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Unfulfillment and unhappiness are things most men have learned to Dim endure. Endure, yes. So making that the price of something... Is means that it's a low price, and so, women are going to pay it a lot sooner than the men are. Yeah, and I because mean that's again, there, it's the that's why there's a thing. wonder it's me a long that suffering there's thing. a part of me that wonders if it's a little bit like playing with fire because it's a bit you could if it if it can if it goes on long enough that people really catch on to it and realize okay, I mean this is going to sound a little. I'm not. I'm not suggest. I'm not. Wouldn't be defending this as justifiable. But if it if men go on this way for long enough, that women start to realize, okay, actually, we don't. This doesn't work. The whole we don't need no man concept. Once that illusion will fail pretty quickly. Once the men stop showing up. Yeah. The question is, can that realization come before the point of no return? Correct. Because that's the game you're playing. Is this is ultimately? I mean, if you take an accelerationist view. It's the best cure in that it will expose the true problem. Right. The problem is it might not expose it sooner in time, yeah. than it's too late. Yeah. And I don't know, honestly. I think the fact that there's people waking up to it now could well, mean that so it works. Here's, here's, the, here's the encouragement to you. I don't need the encouragement. I'm no, I'm saying there is there is a, a uh, preponderance of people that are waking oh, up I to agree. it. Oh, I see that. No, no, no. But I'm saying in... It's now on a on a it's being responded to on a pop culture level or a, a cultural zeitgeist level where there's these people they're literally calling it um, um, like a trad movement or something like that. And basically yeah, it's like the TikTok version of that does seem a little bit just like the new form of attention mongering. It is a little bit like I'm different. So Therefore I'm like this and I still crave validation on social media. 100%. It's like, okay, there's the root of the problem. Sand all that has validation. All yeah. the cancer has done is metastasized. Right. And congratulations. You don't have kidney cancer. It's in your colon. <laughs> um, no, but I think it's true that, uh, uh, there's a knee in the same way that there was a knee jerk reaction away. Plus you'll notice a lot of the people on that. Again, I mean, I take, this is sort of the Michael Knowles opinion is it's like, if you're living with your boyfriend, you're not traditional. Yeah. You might fulfill a traditional role, but you are still, your grandmother would still say that this was wrong. Right. <laughs> so this well, isn't that traditional. No, just no. Because what I'm getting at is that in the same way that, Early technology uh, on social media uh, caused people to go generationally. There were some some uh, of the younger generation that went. Actually, we're kind of tired of having society or having technology constantly pushed in our faces. We're going to move back into more of an analog position well, with some various things. The question is always not is someone going to catch on because someone always does. The question is will enough people catch on to change things? Right, but that getting has yet back to, be to seen. that, but but getting back to the um, the salt bag that we're going to be wearing for salt a second. Salt bag. I got um, salt bag now. Salt bag time for me. <laughs> you just literally step back into Well, because he, he disappears and goes across the room randomly, um, so I never know. I, the, My attempt the, at focus is the not rant I results. have... Oh, you now have a rant. The rant I have against it what is... Was the, what was what the, we just went through? The biggest issue I have with it, I think, is... I think it's the biggest issue knowing, we have with everything, which is knowing in non-introspection and self-focus. It's a yes, it's a non-introspection thing. But here's, like here's the thing, though. Oxymoron, it, the reason it? it feels personal to me is because I go, there are so many men that I'm going to say this without sounding incredibly 
I think sexist. I think you're too late. The the lion's share of men deal with so much more than anyone would ever give them credit for because the reality is we 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 well, endure things. That's well, what we do. Have you I mean you probably I don't you're not going to be happy to know about this. I'm not you're going to be unhappy to be proven right. There was a famous story uh, last year that was it was when the sort of tragic culmination of the story occurred. There was a feminist author who pretended to be a man for a year as sort of a social experiment as a way of validating the opinion that men have it easy. Yeah. And she wrote about the fact that she was like, oh, no, it actually isn't any easier. In fact, in a lot of ways, it sucks. Yeah. And at first, this was seen as like, oh, a positive triumph. And then last year, it was revealed that she actually ended up killing herself because she never got over it. Like, the year she spent as a man traumatized her so severely that, like, that she couldn't un, she couldn't go back to normal. And that's tragic. And it is. And, and that's, my point is, and that's, what you're doing is you are functioning in a place you don't belong, period. And I'm not saying that rudely in the same way that I can't nurse a baby with my chest. It's impossible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's silly for me to argue, like, oh, no, if they just latch long enough, eventually <laughs> I'll start lactating. That's not what's going to happen. I mean, you'll start bleeding, maybe. <laughs> but they will never, I will never be able to fulfill a role that a woman can fu- fulfill. Even, okay, even take a more abstract concept. There are things on an emotional level that my wife can communicate to my kids that I will never be able to communicate in the same way that 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 means the same thing to them that again this is why i think that single parents have it rough of course because and statistically it's proven true that even if you do a really really bang up job as a single parent there will still be things that your kid is missing and the best thing really you can do as a single parent is to acknowledge those things well, I, took fi- ah, I thought i was being clever and he was more clever Anyway, that that is my biggest rub is when women act like not only we're tired of our gender our 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 given gender roles because men are forcing us into this. I'm like, okay, first of all, no one no one cares about you. If you want to go about <laughs> that, see, doing that's, that, that's if you want to go about response. doing that, that's fine. But that's men aren't going to date you. They're not going to want to hang out with you. That's my response to everything. Is just the whole world would do better to know that no one gives a crap about you. <laughs> Like, that's a thing I think kids need to know. you got to find the right age, because if you tell them that too early, it's going to be a problem. But there comes an age... I think, I think it's th- around puberty. I think just it's around the teenage year. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's when they start to be insistent that the opposite is true. Because, mm-hmm. of course, when you raise them, most of the... I mean, they, I think they, they didn't bluey handle this actually somewhat humorously. Totally but, random but reference. But again. But it's like the idea, you're going to, of course, treat your kids like they're the most special kids in the world. And I thought a, they did that for a reason, wildly effective. And for a, for a, a pretty good reason, they kind of are going to be. Right. But the problem is, and once you, they start that's... to believe that, you then have to remind them of the... Not of the untruth of it, but you got to, you can't, it's well, the, the dark reality that it's you got to, you got to choose your moment context. well, because I think, I mean, you just, I think every problem in the world could be solved if people knew that no one gives a crap about you. Well, and just to accept that, like, but I mean <laughs> that, but then to say also that. Basically I'm saying absurdism is really what the world needs. Because if everyone just knew, I am a puny speck on a puny speck in a punier speck in a vast emptiness, you'd just be like, well, then, but then screw there's everything. Al- but there's also just, again, a broader perspective that says there are people that equally are living lives and, and experiences that I know nothing about. Well, and to suggest it's a challenge, that, though, to expect people because no one can know things they don't know. No, I'm not saying that they should know things that they don't know. What I'm saying is to acknowledge things that they don't know. And when well, yes, that's my when people I suppose, act like when you're presented with something you don't know, to be arrogant about insisting that you do know and therefore this thing is wrong. That's the problem. Well, and that's why I say with the feminist movement, the biggest issue I have is to suggest. 
they can never let it stand on its own. They have to compare it directly to man to being a man, which I find which ironic. They know nothing about. Which I yeah, which I find ironic and also incredibly insulting because I know not only of myself and things that I shoulder without speaking a word of it, but also other men that I've known that unfortunately have not shouldered it well and have had to suffer for it both silently and publicly to a lesser degree in a terrible result. You go, I mean, that, that story is tragic of that woman, but you go, the, the, what, it, what it highlights is that you're missing a component here, and that is that the world is bigger than you. <laughs> well, again, you are insignificant. <laughs> well, but then I come back to... Where is he at? He just jumped over the wall! He made me waste my thing! He... You fruitcake! <laughs> How did you get over there? <laughs> get back here and let me explode at you! I mean, this is gonna help. I'm probably gonna die now because I just charged him from across the room. But I'm mad! That was un unprofessional. That's what this. Aww. <laughs> um, but but that that is my biggest issue. Is that it's. It's the world so is bigger than you. Well, it's bigger than you, and here's the thing: what you are suggesting is 100% petulant because adults have to contribute to society. So whether or not you want well, to have to, not necessarily. If you're content if you're to just a, die, that's what I'm saying. I mean, okay, either live or well, hey, get live and let die. Well, I was gonna get busy eating. Get busy dying. <laughs> well, but it's. I always quote that wrong because of the one it's reference. Get busy I know I was. I'm always quoting that one Josh Thompson video <laughs> because it's funny. But, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. It's, Everyone knew what I meant. It's a. It's a. I want to live. I want to do solely what I want to do. Well, we get back to the. And Rosalian I want everybody. Concept. And I want everybody. To I want to live without consequence. Me for doing that. It's like, no. No is the answer. No is the answer. Number one, because you can't control what other people are doing. Number two, because if you're not a constructive member of society, society's going to say, to heck with you. Sorry. That is the that is the brass tax of it. Men don't have it any easier than you. It just looks a little different. Oh. And unfortunately, you are meant to contribute to society. Sorry to burst your bubble, but there is no ideolo you know, ideological zone that you can live in that says that women get to just sit back eating grapes that are given by men who are fruitcakes anyway and just are stupid and can't carry our own brains. And so we ought to just serve you and be subservient. You, the converse of what you're saying happens to you is what you want is what you want. I said this, we said this again off air. It's the, it's the same thing with the concept of communism and, and that where it's like you, what you claim to want isn't what you want. You want to be Stalin. <laughs> like you don't want, Oh, I want equality for everyone. It's like, no, I just want the paradigm shifted in my favor. Right. I want to be the new upper class. 100%. I don't want equality. I want to be the new upper class. And well, it's Jordan Peterson's whole thing. And then they think, once I'm the upper class, I'm going to be the benevolent dictator no, or whatever else. It's you like, don't. which you're not. You're going to be Stalin. <laughs> exactly. And you will get exactly what Stalin got because Stalin got what he wanted. <laughs> So anyway, that was my rant. I'm sick and tired of hearing about people that don't want to take responsibility for being an adult. And I tell you, this pork society. will last a year with this salt. So if now we have no more subscribers, I'm sorry. <laughs> but traditional gender roles and uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, what is it called? Gender biology as far as... As far as... What is it called? I'm letting you dig yourself into that hole. What is it called? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what they call it because it's so stupid. The stupid binary gender thing. It's like, I'm sorry. Let's not argue about this anymore. Let's just get back to the science and quit straining at gnats. I now... I'm, I'm leaving you alone here. <laughs> I'm leaving you out to dry with your salted meats. Anyway... That's all I got to say. Whether you're... Is it? it that, whether you're... Are you going to bring it up later then? No, certainly not. But I, I, I have sat on it long enough. <laughs> sat on and, it quite long, it would seem. And the, the, 
the notion that uh, anyone ought to suggest that their perspective, I don't care whether it's feminism or or Communism. any sort of, yeah, or political ideology or whatever it may be, to suggest that your goal long term is to make it where you don't have to do that much and everybody else ought to do what you need them to do is terribly petulant. Just, and the fact that you can't see that is just all the more reason why it's petulant. Well, end with Mark Twain. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. 